Welcome back. In this video, I'll show how to add a Redis client to our application so we can store data on a Redis server. If you're not already familiar with Redis, it's a type of database known as a data structure store, and it provides really fast read and write operations, in part because the entire database is held in memory instead of on disk, but also because the data structures themselves are really efficient. This video assumes that you already have Redis installed, so be sure to do that first. If you can't find instructions for installing Redis on the platform you're using, leave a comment below. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and install the Go package we'll be using to communicate with Redis. There are a few options available here, but I've chosen to use the Go Redis package. And now it's installed. We also need to import the Redis package into our project. You should be familiar with this already. And since our client should be accessible from different routes in our application, we'll go ahead and make it a global variable. Now we need to instantiate the client object. The option we're passing it here is telling the client where the Redis server is. In this example, we're running it on the same machine as our web application on port 6379, which is the default port for Redis. Now that we have a client ready, let's go ahead and use it to grab some data from the Redis server. To do this, we'll add some code to the top of our index handler. This will grab the first 10 strings from a list in Redis named comments. You might notice that this method returns two values. One is an array of strings containing the comments we want. The other is an error object, or nil, depending on whether or not our request failed. I won't go too deeply into error handling in this particular video, so instead of handling the errors correctly, we'll just return from index handler. Next, we need to pass this comments array into our template, and then render them into the HTML. In the Go template language, range is used to loop over the value that we pass, which in this case is our list of comments. Then for each comment, we just create a div that contains the string. If we were to run our server as is, there wouldn't be any comments because that particular array in the Redis server is empty. So we'll go ahead and open up a terminal and then launch the Redis command line interface. From here, we should be able to push onto our comments object a few strings. Let's try hello world testing and then one, two, three. Then what? We'll exit this Redis command line and hopefully we can launch our Go server 
go run main.go and then open up our web browser go to localhost 8080 and there's our comments in the next video I'll show how to add a form to this web application so that users can leave their own comments speaking of comments if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos feel free to leave them in the comments below bye